Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Audio Scrawl. I'm Kang. This is Handsome Brandon. All right, Handsome Brandon. <laughs> and today we have a couple of topics we would like to discuss. Uh, do you want to start us off? or I mean, you said there was something you want to talk about? or Oh, no. No? Um, no? Well, a lot of Dragon Quest announcements have happened i kind of want to if you don't mind like i figure we should save this a little bit after this discussion i kind of want to mention about red ash i just kind of want to start off with this discussion and then just kind of bring it up on on a higher note Uh, okay okay (laughs) all right so you know about like what's going on with red ash yep with the kickstarter Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like it's insane what's been going on with red ash and it's very sketchy what's going on, uh, especially especially with KG and Afune and the uh, company Concept. Uh huh. And we've we've talked about it before where they have this new um, Kickstarter going on. Started uh, I think July fourth, uh, probably Anime Expo when we were out there. Yep. And yeah, it's supposed to be a spiritual successor to uh, Mega Man Legends, and <laughs> you know just your typical Kickstarter of. We're not gonna get this game done until uh, you know we, we need your help. Please fund this. Yes, and it's like mighty number nine all over again. How Kickstarter goes, yeah. Yes, and nothing's happening actually. I think they maybe in the middle of the of the campaign they reached fifty uh, percent uh, of their funding. Yeah, but kind of hasn't increased any more than that. So we know that it spells trouble. And well, like we said, well, like like we were discussing about it, uh, our last week's episode, it's just it's just been uh, sketchy all over the place, you know. That's all. And and to add to this, they, the, the, the campaign was going to end four days. In four days, the campaign was going to end at that time, and all of a sudden, they've announced that they got funding. Yes, complete funding. <laughs> From another company known as uh, Fuse, a Chinese uh, entertainment company. Yeah, they they said, "Hey, here's the money. We're gonna we're gonna back up this project," and they announced, "All right, guys, game's happening. No matter what, um, if this if this campaign fails, the game's coming out anyway." And so all the money that's going in here so far, it's actually going to go towards content. We're gonna add more content to the game. Yeah, but then they're still not going to reach their initial goal so they're not going to get any of the money from kickstarter and what's weird is that they should have after they've announced it they should have just canceled kickstarter and that's that like hey we've got funding you know kickstarter over but now instead of that they added some more uh reward some some you know some tears to the reward list i'm like "Uh." it's a bizarre bait and switch and I don't know if that's ethical, especially um, through Kickstarter, because it, it was all about making this game. And now, all the, you know, four days before the end of the campaign, they're just saying, "Okay, hey, your money's going to go towards uh, the you know extra content. We'll make it more into a full game." And that just makes no sense to me. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm like, whoa, where did this come out? You know, it came out of nowhere for reals. So. <clears throat> the the thing about Kickstarter and all the projects that we've uh, funded, uh, these companies are very transparent. They're all about uh, getting the information, the development, everything. They they bring it out to the people who are funding it, all the backers. Yeah. And we get to know what's going on. Mm-hmm. One of the things I want to bring up, though, is this situation, It's it kind of reminds me of Shenmue 3, but I feel like Comcept did it in a sketchier way compared to what Shenmue 3 did is that they they announced at the very beginning that hey Sony is going to play a part in the funding uh, of the game uh Sony's going to back back it up they're they're going to help out but before they give a go ahead for this game to happen we we need to engage like interest in the game we want to see who like who's going to support it we could use the funding the funding will go towards more content in the game mm-hmm so I I feel that they did a great job at being transparent because they they broke records for Kickstarter yeah and they did a great job, but what's going on with uh, Red Ash is just it's bizarre, and and I and I feel like there's a lot of things that affected people from backing up the project. I also feel that other reasons that's keeping us to hold back and like holding back from backing it up is because. 
they they have they're not very good at at updating. They're not letting people know what's going on. They keep saying we're very busy, we're very busy. Yeah, we'll 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 tell you guys later after the Kickstarter is finished. <laughs> we'll let you guys know then. <laughs> yeah, they, that's what they keep saying, and that doesn't make any sense. I mean, I even for me, how can I back up a project? They haven't even officially announced what's what home console is it going to be for mm -hmm. i mean i wanted to to back this project but i can't because the reward is not uh, it doesn't uh, it's not very incentive enough for me yeah and not to mention this this campaign was not for a full game this was just for a prologue and maybe episode <laughs> one of of you know of the uh the game or it could be up to chapter four yeah Maybe maybe more maps will be unlocked. Yeah, and I, and I don't like that idea. Also, it's like back in the game for one episode. Like, no, I, I want the full game. You know, if I'm going to kickstart something, kick it, kickstart it, and make the entire game, not yeah episode one. Yeah, and I think other challenges too is just because uh, Mighty Number no. Nine hasn't come out yet. Comcept and Inafune himself are busy helping out working on other projects uh -huh. as well. So, it, it's just a bizarre Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, and it I'm is not bizarre. very happy about it. And it really bums me out because I, I, I respect Inafune, but what's going on with this, it's... Yeah, and, and, you know, and, and, we, and we want to see a uh, you know, spir spiritual successor to Mega Man Legends. I am happy that the game is funded. Now, don't get me wrong... I, I'm glad. Like it is good news that that they announced. Hey, Fuse is giving us the funding. We're going to make this game. Mm -hmm. But how they handled uh, Kickstarter and all the backers, that yeah, it just feels very, very betrayal. Yeah, it left a lot to be desired. You know, especially especially from fans. You know. Yes. So, so hopefully, you know, hopefully the game's good, so I could buy it, I guess, and support them. Yeah, so. they came out with a, a little demo or something for people to try it out. And a prototype? Yeah, oh, the prototype. I saw that prototype. It, they, they, needed, they needed a couple more weeks for that prototype. Yeah, well, at least there's something, but well, we'll see. I mean, uh -huh. yeah, well, whatever. Someone else is funding it, so there's nothing for us to be scared about anymore. Just hopefully they, they make on their promise. Just make a good game. Make yep. a good successor. All right, so um, so yeah, what we want to talk about that I'm very excited about is Dragon Quest. Uh, the Dragon Quest announcement that happened on the 28th of July. The last Dragon Quest announcement. Yeah, the latest one where Square Enix had a conference for it. And they announced a, a bunch of new games coming out. And uh, so we're going to start off, uh, they've announced Dragon Quest Monster Battle Scanner, Dragon Quest Monster Joker 3, Dragon Quest Builders, well, that's already been announced, but it's it's something to be highlighted nonetheless. And then there's Dragon Quest Heroes Two, and then uh, the the coup de grace would be Dragon Quest Eleven. Mm -hmm. I'm and... sure we're missing some more, but <laughs> there's a lot of Dragon Quest games actually, and and there's at least one part part one particular game that hasn't come out in the U.S. yet that I'm just wondering, oh, where's it at? But we'll see. I don't know. These announcements kind of made me a little bit more optimistic. Yeah, yeah. So, starting off, Dragon Quest Monster Battle Scanner. It's a new arcade game. Yep, so we'll never play it. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that, King? Uh, sounds sounds interesting. But yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those arcade games where they go all out, and it's probably super cool to play, and maybe strategic, and... But Japan only. Uh, those those arcade games, man. They they come up. I mean, they have Yu-Gi-Oh arcades, and uh -huh. you can bring your deck of cards to play in, and does some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think it's very very viable in the U.S. And then we have Dragon Quest Monsters Joker Three. And well, I know nothing much about the franchise. Nope, I don't know much about the franchise. <laughs> I, know, I know it was just for the DS when it came out. You know, the first two, and this one's coming out for the 3DS, so... Yeah. Uh, good chance of a localization, I suppose. Yeah, I think I think so, uh, since the first year has already come out. And uh, Dragon Quest does have a pretty good fan base. It's tough getting all those games out here in the U.S. Um, I don't know, I'll have to do some uh, some research about uh, Monster uh, Monsters Joker and see how that's doing. But I think it does so-so. 
And then the Dragon Quest Builders. That one looks very interesting to me. Because uh, it's, dra- it's a Dragon Quest themed Minecraft, pretty much. Yes. So you, so you, you're, you're a blocky character. You destroy stuff. You build stuff. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. I'm, you think it might be something like RPG Maker? You know, people might be coming up with their own scenarios or no. or worlds and stuff. I don't think so. No? You, you you do you do build your own world though. Okay. I, they do say like you you get to build your your own town and stuff. So. Yeah, which is probably the whole point of why it's being called Builders. Yep. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm intrigued about this game. I like to I like to keep track of it and see how it goes. I mean, mm-hmm. and it looks good. I mean, t- maybe just because it's Dragon Quest. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, it has a legacy. Yeah, like Hyrule Warriors. You know, like no, you know, Dynasty Warriors was kind of a a, a niche thing, and then oh heck, here's a Zelda themed Dynasty Warriors, and all of them like everybody loves it. Like so, huh? Yeah, and uh, sometimes that's what it takes is just a certain franchise to um to to get into that genre, and it just makes it more popular. Yep. And then we have Dragon Quest Heroes 2, and uh, yeah, I mean, waiting for the first game to come out in, in America, and uh, I was watching a, a video of it, a demo uh, during E3 of uh, Dragon Quest Heroes 1 for the PlayStation 4, and I, I'm thinking about maybe pre-ordering that game. Yeah, it's an action RPG, it looks good. Yeah, vi- it visually looks great. Uh, mi- I haven't played any Dynasty Warriors or Sengoku Basada type games. Not in a long time, and they're they're guilty pleasure type games, button masher so to speak. Yeah. But Dragon Quest, something about it, especially what they've been talking about, it's it's pretty ambitious of changing up the formula. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Well, I was going to ask about like the developers. Aren't they co-developing with another studio that has something to do with these type types of games? You mean like Omega Force? Uh, from, yes. From uh, Tech McCoy? Yes. Because uh, the, don't they do the uh, Dynasty Warriors or yeah. Samurai Warriors? Uh-huh. Yeah, they do Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, are they helping out with Dragon Quest Heroes? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. I believe most Dynasty Warriors <laughs> themed game now are collaboration with Tecmo Koa. Yeah, and uh, so finally, uh, well, oh hold up, oh sorry, go uh, ahead. And, and for, for to know, Dragon Quest Heroes Two was announced <laughs> uh, last April, April first actually, and no. It was it was a little like teaser website, and if you, if people could play play a little flash game, and if you were able to defeat a million enemies, they would reveal the next title. And apparently, it was Dragon Quest Heroes Two, revealed on April first, and nobody knew if it was uh, real or not. <laughs> so, so it's fun to finally get some a little bit more information. Apparently, it's coming out in Japan uh, next year, like spring twenty sixteen, mm. and it will have a uh, four player multiplayer. So, yeah. Looking forward to that. See how that looks. <laughs> All right. Well, before and we now, get, before we move on to like the latest game, um, uh, I do want to talk about that. There's a couple of other games. Uh, I mean, we have Dragon Quest Eight that's been announced for the 3DS. Uh, I've seen it. it. looks looks pretty good for the 3DS, and they're adding uh, extra content in there that wasn't seen before in the PlayStation Two. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, there's been other PlayStation Two games ported for the 3DS, and from what I understand, they're they're doing pretty good. Uh, I you know it's debatable if the 3DS is just as good as PlayStation 2 or if uh, the PlayStation 2 is still maybe superior based on graphics and engine, but uh, who knows? It depends on how they do. And uh, the game though I I'm waiting I'm waiting on is Dragon Quest 7. It's already out in Japan. It's been out for a couple of years actually, and they still haven't uh, brought up, brought it out to the U.S. I don't know. Is, is is Nintendo in charge of publishing those games? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> not not necessarily all of them, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you're right. 4, 5, and 6 uh, were remade for the for the Nintendo DS. I believe Dragon Quest 4 was localized and published by Square. And 5 and 6 were published by Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And the same for Dragon Quest 9. So... Yeah, I mean, that d- might have something to do with publishers. And the franchise, it's very tricky for it to be brought to the U.S. Yeah, because uh, it's, not, it's not as big as a Final Fantasy. Yeah, so. it's, uh, it's much bigger uh, in Japan. I mean, it is like the RPG series in Japan. Yeah. So, finally, I want to talk about uh, Dragon Quest Eleven, And I really liked how they announced this game. 
And what I want to bring up is that they don't they didn't show it as a trailer. They didn't show any trailers, no CG uh, cinematic sequence, nothing like that. All they did was show the gameplay. Yes. Or at least what's w- the build of it so far. Yeah, and it looks really good so far. Like really good. The biggest I, Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was I was going to say both versions of the game looks really good so far. Yeah, and uh, King says both versions. That was the biggest mi- mystery was what platform is this game going to come out for because it as far as as fans are concerned at this point, this game, the latest game, could be on any platforms because yep. for well, a long, well, well, except for Xbox, but that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. Well, my point is that is it going to be for handheld or is it going to be for home console or could it be for PC? Because you know, we we've always, we've always, we've always expect the latest game to come out for the next gen uh, system. Now, uh, Dragon Quest is kind of slow about that one, but Dragon Quest has proven that it's not about what hardware it's running on. It's the name itself. Uh, it took them forever to be on Super Nintendo, but they finally did it. And just, it's such a big hit. And the ninth game, Dragon Quest Nine, was kind of controversial because Dragon Quest Eight was on, was on PlayStation 2. Yep. And the ninth game, they announced, hey, it's coming out for DS. And I remember hearing about that news, and the first thing that popped in my head was, what? Like, you don't see that in Final Fantasy. You won't see... Uh, the latest Final Fantasy game to be on, on a handheld system. Yeah, you won't you, you won't see a main number series. It would be like a spinoff or something. Right. Yeah, and nothing wrong with that. It's just they they tend to move forward. But Dragon Quest they did something different. But it wasn't a failure. It it did pretty good, yeah. and it was kind of more of a social game too. And uh, and I think that kind of gameplay they they moved forward with Dragon Quest Ten, and that ended up being for the Wii, and that's an MMORPG. Uh, it's disappointing because it was a game that I didn't expect it to come to the U.S. anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I I hoped it did. You know, right? It came out for the There's Wii. There's a glimmer of hope. Yeah, but then but then afterwards it got announced for the Wii U, and like, oh, maybe they'll bring that version over. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it, they still didn't. So, yeah. but now they've announced the PlayStation Four version, so maybe maybe they'll bring that version over. Yeah, I mean, it can still work. I yeah, mean, it's, it's MMO can. is different than than a like, actual game. Yeah, it totally could. Yeah, because they don't really quite end, and everyone can pick like their hero and their character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, eleven, they announced it for both PlayStation Four and 3DS, and um, and I guess maybe Nintendo's NX also. Yeah, that's it's uh, not officially confirmed. It's, it's not officially still. confirmed, but I guess more more <laughs> more so likely. Yeah, but from a marketing standpoint, this is very fascinating to me. I feel like you you hear all kinds of games coming out where it's it's coming out for home console, and then they'll be like, "Hey, we're also going to have this game for the handheld." But when it comes out for the handheld, it's not the official game. It's not a port of the main game. It's like another like side character game yeah. or a complementary game, like a side story, right? And. But Dragon Quest XI, it's an official like main story game, and it's being made for PlayStation 4 and 3DS, yep. and they're being made based on the limitation of the engine it's running on. So you're not having Dragon Quest XI on PlayStation 4, and it's being ported for, for the 3DS, uh, nor is it at 3DS, it's being ported on the PS4. The, these games are, desi- are designed on the consoles that they're being made for. Yeah. And... I, I just can't think of any, any anything else that's done that. I mean, there was Nino Kuni that popped in my head, but that's still very different because Nino Kuni came out for DS first, and the game ended at a certain point yeah. in the story. And then later on, they announced, "Hey, we're having Nino Kuni for PlayStation 3," and the story starts off like the same thing, the same story as the DS, except it continues and completes the story. Yeah, it was an interesting ending. <laughs> It should have stopped where the 3D where the 3 DS version stopped. The DS version, yeah. Or the DS version, yeah. <laughs> so, it, it's such an ambitious project. It's it's so cool, but man, it's it might be risky. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the thing is that it's also they've also said it's coming out. Both versions are coming out at the same time. Right? Yes. Yes. Why Why wouldn't so. it be? I mean, it. It feels like it. It has to be simultaneous launch, and there's some people who are worried that 
what what if there's a delay on on this particular console would it affect the other yeah probably and i feel like uh i think they should be delayed i think it should be a simultaneous launch it's i think it's very exciting yeah and yeah i just love how it looks on the playstation 4 it's exactly what what i was hoping it would be yeah reminds me of dragon quest 8 scaled world map you see the enemies on the field, no random No encounter. random battles, yep. The scale of the village like that you're in, like how tall the walls are, it's huge. Yeah. Like, it's a massive world. It's definitely like 1-1 one, one scale, for sure. Yeah, there's platforming that they added, the character can mm, jump. You can jump. <laughs> yeah. and, I, I, and I believe the Famitsu scan that just came out showed uh, turn-based combat. Okay. For for the uh, you know for the console version, for uh-huh. the PS4 I haven't version, seen so. it. I haven't seen much about that. There's literally like one image, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I expect it to be like Dragon Quest Eight, and then that's not a bad thing though, because Dragon Quest, um, like the eighth game, I felt like they they try to like change it and do things a bit differently, but they always try to maintain the tradition of first person view. But when you initiate attack, you'll see it. You'll see it visually, uh-huh. and they did that with the ninth game. They did a great job with that. So that's my expectation of the tenth game, but I, I'm gonna—I feel like there's gonna be some innovation in there, and and I think that's what I'm excited about. And the the world map looks stunning too. And I saw the main character walking past the uh, the water, and the water kind of has that, that, little, that detail. Yeah, passing the reflection, yeah. the ripples, the, the the little rainbow that comes out. Oh. Yeah, and the characters—they look like Akira Toriyama's artwork. Of course, of course it's, the art is done by Akira Toriyama, <laughs> so. The game is running on Unreal Engine 4. Like, every Japanese game is nowadays, apparently. Yeah, they seem to finally be utilizing that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, maybe. kudos to them. It's a good engine, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, if, yeah. if handled by the right people, they can make it work. And then, seeing the 3DS, I have to admit, I'm very blown away by the visuals of the, of the 3DS. I think it looks pretty good, yeah. you know, by 3DS standard. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the 3DS version is interesting, because... For, for the most part, they they have said that you, you can't do this 100% through the game, but for the most part, you can have both views. There's a 3D view and a 2D view of the game, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that that would be interesting to see. And and the uh, the attack animation is the same on both, so... Now, do you know about the difference between... Uh, you can actually change the style of the battle system... There is traditional 2D, and there's the 3D battle, too. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. They say that when you move the character to like the 3D world with a slider stick, if you get into a fight, the battle's going to be 3D. But if you're moving the character around using the D-pad, which is for the 2D, the battle system's going to be your old-school 2D look. Although the enemies don't have battle animations like the uh, like 4, 5, and 6 DS games, but it's cool to have that option. I also feel that I I think maybe there, the story has something to do with the 2D and 3D because they mentioned that you're not always going to have simultaneous uh, 2D and 3D. The title has something to do with time. Yeah. And the, the character re- looks like Trunks from <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. With, well, with the long hair and all the long hair Trunks. Yeah. Future Trunks. Yeah. And it also also the games are. The plan is to release these games in 2016. That's going to be the 30th anniversary of the Dragon Quest uh, franchise. Yep. Uh, and I feel like the the handheld might have something to do with like playing tribute and homage to, to all the games. But I feel like the story, since it has something to do with time, it might have something to do with the story. It could be a function or a feature that has a lot to do with the story. I don't know. It makes me wonder about the PlayStation Four and what's going on with that. Yeah, because they're they're both the same game, so you can't have one game just be oh here's this story that has this feature and then not put it in the the other version. Yeah, and it seems to have um, a lot of uh, like maybe Easter egg characters in there, like from past uh, Dragon Quest games appearing in the in this latest installment. So uh, time will tell. We'll see later. Yeah, we'll on. see. Hopefully. Hopefully they announce a, a localization soon because I would love to play it. <laughs> it. I'm very excited for for this game and and hearing about the game coming out for PlayStation Four and 3DS, I feel like there's a really good chance for the game to come out in the U.S. Yeah, for sure, especially considering the install base outside of Japan with the PlayStation Four. Yeah, there's no reason for it not to. 
I see. I, I find. I can't figure out if... I don't know what made them decide to do this. I can't figure out if they're doing this to test out the market. The market. Mm-hmm. Hey, which system or platform would the game sell more outside of Japan? Like globally, how would it do? The 3DS makes so much sense still mm-hmm. because yeah. it has mass appeal. There's a lot of people who owns a 3DS. Not everyone owns a PlayStation 4. Yeah, and it's easier to play a handheld. Especially if, um, you know, when you have kids or people who are constantly traveling, like going to work or going to school, and they're away from the house. But, and again, I am one of those people that I like a home console. I like it for PlayStation 4. But, I don't know, maybe it'd be cool to have both. Who knows? But, yeah, I'm very curious of what, what they're trying to go for. What, what are they trying to see? Yeah. And would it, would it eat itself up? If you buy if you buy for the PlayStation Four, would you bother getting for the 3DS or vice versa? Um, yeah, they've done that before. It's a little game called Smash Brothers. <laughs> that's oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> People bought both versions, so there's no you know nobody stopping here. Considering considering the PlayStation Four and the or the console version and the handheld version is so different. Yeah. This time around, so. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's very interesting. I, yeah, I don't know if it's going to affect its <clears throat> own sales. Like maybe everyone's buying for the 3DS and people aren't bothering with PlayStation 4. Or, you know what? Why not? Mm-hmm. We're doing it because it's the 30th anniversary. It's going to be the biggest game ever. And it could be a global launch. Now, I say could be. They haven't officially confirmed that it's coming out of the U.S. But, again, it's coming out for both systems. I mean, I can't see how it could not come out in the U.S. Mm-hmm. or it globally. Yeah, so especially in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And the game just looks too damn good not to come to the U.S. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I I feel that's just how I feel, but I'm a little bit more excited about this game than I am of Final Fantasy 15. What? You're crazy. <laughs> I mean, they're still polishing. I mean, that's what the uh, the demo or the beta of, of Final Fantasy the demo, is for, is yeah. to polish it. It's a well, new I system think, and mechanic. I think, it's, I think it's just because you haven't heard anything about Final Fantasy XV for a while. This news just barely broke out. You know, it's very exciting. While fifteen has been pretty quiet, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm sure once once more information pops out from 15 we'll be like oh the hype re- the hype meter's rising again for 15 maybe but i i'm kind of vowing not to follow trailers too much right yeah and uh, dragon quest kind of has that i mean you you kind of have an expectation out of dragon quest 11 if you played uh, previous dragon quest games before they they have a, a certain theme that they stick with it's always yeah. fantasy they have a battle system, a mechanic that you know is hey, it's pretty similar to all mm-hmm. of them. They tweak it and pretty make it better, school. easier, yeah, so uh, more approachable. So with saying that, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to Final Fantasy more. <laughs> <laughs> True, but I mean, I don't know. You have you have people who are really into JRPGs. Yeah, and, no, I'm not. I'm not saying you know, yeah. this game looks bad by any means. So <laughs> I mean, it looks great. I'm I'm gonna get it. So yeah, same here. But no, I'm I'm still excited for 15. I really want to mm-hmm. play that game. But Dragon Quest is sort of that. It's a safe bet. You can count on it. You know what it's all about, and you can count on that. Mm-hmm. Whereas Final Fantasy, they've taken risks. Some games, you yeah, know what? Yeah. It didn't work out. Mm-hmm. It didn't pan out. They take I, a lot of risk. Yeah. I mean, I give credit for the Final Fantasy franchise that they take risks. Um, 13. <laughs> 13 2. Yeah. <laughs> Finding returns. Hey, man. They took a lot of 14 risk. 14 online. Well, not 14. Oh, 14 Reborn is good. Okay, <laughs> not, not when it launched, because that was, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They, they all have their thing, though. And they, they, hey, they take risks. You can't fault them for that. But yep. I, I'm just liking what, what Square is doing lately. They're, I'm just pleased with them. Yeah. Uh, 15, yeah. What's not to be excited about? Dragon, the yeah, new Dragon Quest They're game. on a roll, actually. If, if, uh, if Final Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3 appear next year they have a lot of games next year yeah they have Dragon Quest they have all the Dragon Quest they have Star Wars and 5 yes Final Fantasy uh, 15 Kingdom Hearts 3 yeah I hear Disney is being a little bit more involved with uh, production yeah it, you know if Disney's Disney's involved you know you know Kingdom Hearts can't take too long because if Disney's involved they're yeah. like yo we need 
we need to see this, you know, product ships and make money. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for that. Yeah. All right, so well, that concludes about our discussion on Dragon Quest. Yeah. And, um, and with that, I guess, we'll go into a, well, a little a little interesting thing popped up on the uh, the PlayStation blog. Apparently, they're going to start allowing uh, PlayStation Plus members to vote on selected titles to be the next PlayStation Plus title. Huh. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I like That's that idea. Cool. They, they, they said it's only for PlayStation Plus members, you know, they're only able to vote because you know they're plus members, and they're not going to do this every month. It's it's on on a regular thing, I'm sure. But then the the game with the most uh, votes becomes places of, becomes free for the members, and the rest of the games gets you know gets discounted. That's so, fair. Yeah, I really like that idea. It's it's like uh, when Steam has a sale. Yeah. Yeah, it's like hey, vote for this game. This game will have a massive discount. While the others still get a fairly good discount, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. That's a really cool concept. I really like what they're doing with these uh, digital downloads. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, every vote matters. So people vote if you're if you're PS Plus members. Yeah. <laughs> Have I you know. tried uh, the new game Tembo? I have the not. Elephant. No. I like it. I've I've been playing more and more of it, and I've just been enjoying that. <laughs> oh, yeah, right on. Right on. So yeah, I like to see more of those kinds of stuff. You know, Definitely from the trailers, it's something that looks like I would be interested in. For yeah, sure. and I think they're coming out with uh, more like PlayStation uh, like download games, digital mm-hmm. downloads. Because mm-hmm. they always have, there was like they'll spend a month, month or two, where they're like each week they have like the hottest titles coming out. They kind of uh-huh. hype it up and it's become an an, like anticipated yeah kind of lineup. But well, I remember seeing that. I I didn't get a chance to look at all of them, but just a couple where they're just saying, hey, you could pre-order this game. Uh, one of them that pop, that caught my eye is the new. It's called Galaxy. Oh, Galaxy! Yeah, yeah. yes, <laughs> that game looks really good. Yeah, it's a new uh, shoot 'em up or maybe bullet hell kind of game. Uh, it's shoot 'em up. I wouldn't say bullet hell. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, that game intrigues me, and uh, it seems like it's a it's a new set of lineup. I think Journey for PS4. Yep. It's coming out. Journey. Uh, or it already N- has come out. Journey's already come out. N plus uh, plus. Galaxy, and yes. then uh, everybody's gone to the rapture. <laughs> so, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, uh, and, and that's then, about all the gaming news, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, those were yeah stuff I really wanted to talk about. Other than that, uh, I guess uh, Windows Ten came out. Yeah, it's it's Windows Ten came out. It's free for everybody right now. Uh huh. So it's kind of weird how they're handling that because uh, everyone gets a chance to reserve. Yeah. So they're in a queue mm-hmm. to do Windows 10. Yes. We cheated. <laughs> Everybody had a chance to reserve. Uh, I didn't reserve. Yeah. But I didn't get my Windows 10 immediately. Or immediately. It's weird because you get to reserve it. So I went ahead and reserve, like you know, like our other friends who have mm-hmm. done that too. And then they announced, hey, okay, Windows 10, it's launched. Okay, come back home after work and check my email. Nothing. I, and I go to their main website and they're saying, hey, you could reserve and you'll be queued up. Yeah. We'll send you an email. Could take days or weeks. Could take a while. And uh, and then we'll send you an email to download Windows 10. Yeah. Hey, man, that's fine. I mean, d- just wait. You know, y- you never know. A new software comes with problems, maybe. Fair and enough. If, fair and, enough. If, and, if, and it's not like if you don't do it within, you know, right now, you're not going to get Windows 10. You know, I believe they, they open it up like, hey, you have an entire year to get Windows 10 mm-hmm. for free. And then after that, you know, you get it by usual means, of course. I, I wasn't too fond of Windows 8. Very confusing to me. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, 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 didn't layout. Even, I didn't even get it. Nope, I just stuck with 7. Yeah, because um, yeah, so, some of our friends who has it tried it, and I just wasn't into it. Yeah, so... It's a weird so, setup. Yeah. So what do you think of Windows 10 so far? I'm liking it so far. I haven't played around with everything, but I, I like how the bar, how the menu bar is set up. It kind of has that look and vibe of Windows 7, mm-hmm. and some of the features or functions of Windows 8 they've implemented, probably like in your start button, they have it right there. Yeah, the it's, right it's side very... Pull it up. <coughs> Excuse me. It's very... Uh... It's very snappy. It's quick. It is. It's snappy. It's smoother, too, yeah. when, I, when I'm scrolling mm-hmm. down. Because when you scroll down, it just kind of like just scrolls down. You kind of, you're used to that kind of visual. Yeah. But right now, when you scroll down on uh, on screens, it's 
a little bit smoother, actually. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, it, it's like a transitioning from 480p to um, like uh, 1080. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, so far, it's a good. Uh, so I, far, yeah. So far, I have a good. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're, a good, it's just our impression yeah. so far. It's, right? it's left a good impression on me so far. It, so. it has a search engine if you if there's certain icons you're looking for because I still haven't figured out where everything is at. Uh, I know what I'm looking for. You know, if I'm looking for Audacity or the control panel, I'll just type it in. There it is. Okay, I like that. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it's very snazzy looking. I like that all the icons are on the bottom. Uh, I did not back up my data or my or my hard hard drive. I took a risk, and uh, everything's there. Yeah, it looks like everything's still there. So far, I haven't run across any issues yet, but yeah, we'll wait and see. Yeah. But I like it, uh, and when I was shutting it down, like having it start up and shutting down, it seems to be running a little bit faster. I like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. If, if you are interested in Windows 10, go ahead, just queue up, you know, queue up for it. You're not going yeah. to miss it. You have a year, so... Yeah, and that, I was impatient yeah, though. That <laughs> <laughs> there, there was like the well, you know what? There is actually a link. They do say, "Hey, download the the media tool." Yeah, and you can download it, and, and I think that's that's what I did actually. Yeah. But it didn't seem like I was download downloading media tool. They were saying that I, I guess when you're queued up for Windows 10, maybe it's an automatic update or installation i don't know what's going on with that but when i did the media tool and downloaded it it was pretty straightforward yeah i didn't find it complicated yes it's just like downloading and installing any other softwares or or apps that you put into your computer yep so yeah it works all right cool cool yeah yeah so definitely check it out it's free for now better than paying 100 bucks for it and uh yeah uh, before we sign off, I uh, just want to mention movies that, that are coming out this weekend, and uh, at least one of the movies I plan on watching. Vacation has come out. You don't plan on watching that, do you? I, no, not really. I okay. plan on watching Mission Impossible. That's why I say I'm going to watch one of them. I plan on watching one of them. Okay. That's not the same. Now, Vacation, if I were to go see that movie... It can't be just me and my girlfriend because, well, she hasn't seen the original Vacation, or at least most likely she has not. Yeah. I assume she hasn't seen it. <laughs> well, maybe that's better. That way she can't be compared with, you know, with the, with the older ones. True. So you're going fresh. Yeah, but this is a movie I feel like I have to watch it with my dad, uh, just because of the original movie, the nostalgia, mm -hmm. and I think I need someone who can connect with it. My dad, he, you know what? It's fun seeing R-rated movies with him because he kind of chuckles and laughs a little bit more. Right. Uh, more likely, yeah. He, surprisingly, he has a really funny sense of humor. Like he likes the vulgar humor, mm -hmm. and the original movie, actually, yeah, it's it's rated R, and there are some like bad humor, like vulgar humor in there too. Right. They do it subtly, but it's there, and it's kind of shock factor there. Yeah. So we'll see about the the new one, but I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll, I'll see it for Chris Hemsworth. I, I heard he's super funny mm -hmm. in it. But no, I'm more interested in the new Mission Impossible. Yeah, maybe. I heard that one's good, really and, good so far. As long as it's by Bad Robot, I see I see Jeremy Renner, Simon Pegg are back in the movie. Mm -hmm. I thought they were the highlights of the last uh, Mission Impossible movie. I like that it's team focused. Uh, so I like yeah I like what what they've done since Bad Robot took over since Mission Impossible three. Right on. Yes. Nice. Nice. So I'll see it whenever <laughs> I get the chance to. I suppose. <laughs> You still haven't seen Avengers: Age of Ultron nor Ant Man. I'm getting I mean, there. I'm getting. There. It's on my. <laughs> it's on my to watch list. Like in the dollar theater to yeah. watch at the dollar theater. <laughs> yeah. Someone just has Less it on. Yeah. Someone just has it on the TV. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, we we should do this. We should go to the dollar theater, watch both movies. Um, it'd be cool to see back to back. Maybe not recommend it. I don't know. But I, I would like to see your reaction, seeing Age of Ultron first, and then see Ant Man. Mm -hmm. And like we won't talk about it, we won't compare until after you see both movies, just just to kind of see how you would feel about them. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I have a theory. Okay. An interesting theory. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, that about concludes it for this episode. Uh, I want to thank all of our listeners. Yeah. Uh, for the few that we have, <laughs> and you know what? Hey, if you guys help us out and increase uh, the listeners. Uh, we'd really appreciate that, and I, you know, we're gonna have discussion and see what we can do to expand on our on our channel. Yeah, this, you know, and this is for all the listeners out there. You know, how how few we have. You know, we do this for you guys. So, all right, thanks for listening. 
Yes, this is Handsome Brandon. <laughs> and I'm Kang. Good looking Kang. Yeah. <laughs> All right, laters. <laughs>